we're going to get in there real quick. Nevertheless, it ain't about wrong with children. You know what? I'm finding that out more and more every day. But God said that the kingdom, to me, he said the kingdom is come. <coughs> the kingdom is come. So a lot of people don't realize how short and how close the coming of the Lord is. The gates of hell. But God is not to prevail against us or stop us from coming into the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Well, I know this without a shadow of a doubt, and you that's watching me live, you that's out there uh, uh, right now, I mean, I'm encouraged. I am not backing up. I am not quitting. Whether who come, go, stay, bless God, everybody that's starting with you ain't going to finish with you. But those that are born again of a divine nature of God, they're going to take a stand and they ain't backing up. Call, what do I mean? I've made up my mind. I am not going back. Hmm? For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You want to start reading? Can you dig it? Uh, I won't. Mark, St. Mark, the first chapter. I started the first verse, but we're going to hit it real quick because see, the ministry of Jesus came in with authority. He did not wimpy and whiny about it. He came in with authority. But you got to understand this. Now, what I want you to see, church, saints, people that's watching, I want you to see this, that the enforcement of keeping Jesus going and keeping him encouraged. He had something more than just, you know, he, yes, he had the Holy Ghost, but he needed something from where he come from, my father. I will see it in a minute. Come on. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh huh. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. He was talking about John the Baptizer. He was the messenger who was going to prepare the way before the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. They preached. The prophets pointed to the Messiah. All of them pointed to Jesus. The son of the living God. All right. If you go back to the Old Testament, you're sure. And the names of the true and living God. Not the little G. Not the little demon. Not these things. It's written around here saying that I'm Jesus. I'm God. So I can read your mind. But God, this is not about being a psychic. This is about being a born again child of God that know the mind of God and know the mind of Christ that lives in earth. Come on. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness uh -huh. prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. So here it is. Come on. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. For the remission of sin. Everything wasn't washed away. Wasn't totally cleansed. But here it come. Watch this. Then all the land of Judea and those from Jerusalem went out to him and were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. Confessing their sins. And John, come on. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. Now, this is what the word of God has given to me. The gospel of the kingdom is coming. Amen. And he's already done, showed up and showed out, took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and made all things possible for us to walk in. Not to walk under condemnation, not to walk under the bitterness, and no matter who is or who ain't, bless God, no matter what Bethel Church do or whatever this guy preach over here, inclusion and that one saying you ain't got it but see now the born again for the remission of sin here come Jesus uh, down this line here come Jesus walking up to the river of Jordan 
the Son of the living God. Come on. I indeed baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm going to baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with the what? Holy Spirit. The Holy what? Spirit. So what do it mean to be baptized? Totally consumed. So now here, the Holy Ghost, and as we get on deeper, he's going to baptize you in the fire in the Holy Ghost. Right? He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Now, coming into the new revelation and the new blood covenant through Jesus Christ. Now, this is before the cross, mind you. But this is where it come down to where the Holy Ghost began to lead began to take him. He was led into the wilderness. Okay? Jesus was led by the Holy Ghost into the wilderness. Come on. So the Spirit of the Father that was in him led him. All right, come on. Let's get some more real quick. We got to do it fast. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Okay. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. So here the Holy Ghost coming down. He didn't say it was a dove. He said, you know how dove gracefully come in and he, he just be flapping his wings and he set, set so easy. He don't land hard. And here comes the Holy Ghost, like an unto dove, just come down and set up on Jesus. After he was baptized in the river of Jordan. And some said, why was Jesus baptized? He was the son of God. But he was also acquainted with flesh and blood. Right. He was also connected to Mary. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? In the flesh, the flesh had to, every part, had to be totally clean. Everything. What came through, do you know it's just as important to be clean from the mama as it is from the daddy? Even though the bloodline come through the father, so here it is, his father is clean. His father is holy. But, uh, come on, here you go. Then a voice came from heaven. Wait, listen. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In Wait, oh, 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 now we got to explain that. Here, Jesus. Here. Now understand, flesh and blood, still. But it was God and man reconciling the world back unto himself, right? I mean, y'all believe it. Mm -hmm. But here it is, even in your flesh, and the things of your flesh, you need some encouraging words. So the word that was spoken to him from heaven, not some other man saying, yea, though I say unto thee, thou art the son of God. God himself identified with who he was. Come on, I'm well pleased. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. In other words, but God, the encourager, came because he said, my father, my father, which is in heaven, has given me authority. Amen. My father, which is in heaven, he believes in me. So therefore, he was walking in the word that was given from God. My word will not go out and come back void. So now hear the inspiration of the Holy Ghost and the spirit of the father speaking out of heaven. This is my son in whom... I am well pleased. So now, you know, when my daddy, my natural biological father told me one day, he said, son, I'm happy and I'm pleased with what you're doing, so I'm going to support you in everything you're going to do until I die. And he done that. I was preaching, traveling. You know, you go and people make such a squam about, you know, evangelistic people 
receiving an offering, something that I didn't even take up an offering. I didn't even sell in the body. But people was getting healed, delivered, and set free. And they was getting saved. Genuinely saved. So here it is. God prepared my father and gave me a word from the natural man and said, son, I'm pleased with you. And I felt like, I said, man, my daddy's blessing me. He would drive up and he would hand money to me to keep gas in my car, keep the bills paid. But I never went lacking. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I would hear good things that my dad would say about me. He said, boy, I'm proud of that boy. So it made my siblings mad at me. And they felt like daddy shouldn't be doing that for you. I'm the seventh son and I'm sure I'm, I'm the chosen one. I should be blessed. So nevertheless, if you're number seven or number eight, I think I'm number nine. Because <laughs> he was seven, my sister was eight, and I'm, I'm born number nine, so I don't care. Hallelujah. The blessings of the Father was spoken over me, to me, and about me. Okay? Now you see Jesus. I know who I am. I know where I come from. My Father. Y'all see how powerful that is? My Father is in control. My Father has given me authority. My Father, which is in heaven, has made everything that you look at, everything that you see, everything that you touch. My Father owned the cattle of a thousand hills. My Father has all control. And he gave it to me. Watch this. Come Immediately, on. the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Come on. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan and was with wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. Angels ministered to who? To him. I wonder what did they say to him. I wonder what was they talking to Jesus about out in the wilderness. Now he went out there by himself. He's in the middle of a wild beast. And you got to understand, there's a jungle out there. Lions, bears, and all the other things. And wildebeest, and what's it called? Leopards, and tigers, and foxes, and wolves, and things that would eat you up. Here he is in the wilderness. And see, and, and, and it wasn't downtown New York. Come on. He was tempted by Satan. Now, how many of y'all been going through things? How many of y'all been dealing with pain? You're being tempted. You got manifold temptation. You, your mind is being taunted. Your way of thinking is being checked. Everything that you believe in right now is being checked. And I know this is one of the greatest tests of my life. You know, going through, dealing with church, dealing with church folk, dealing with issues. And I said, God, evangelizing ain't real bad. You can, you can preach to them and go away. <laughs> but in the church, you can't preach to them and go away. They find where you live. <laughs> so I'm the son of God. Come on. The angels ministered unto him. Now watch this. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What did he come preaching? The gospel of the kingdom of God. Gospel of the kingdom of God. Now who are we to pattern after? Jesus. The kingdom has come. His will is to be done in earth as it is in heaven. So now my body, which is a temple of the Holy Ghost, should have this in him, in me. It didn't change. It didn't change. It didn't make no difference. He came out of the wilderness into Galilee and saying, come on, check this out. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now, what is this modern day stuff is teaching folks? It sure ain't teaching them to repent. They ain't teaching them to seek after the kingdom of heaven. Come on. We've been seeking out the stuff, but it ain't the kingdom of God. We've been seeking out the fame, fortune, and glory of men. We've been teaching them how to become prophets. We've been teaching them instead of letting the Holy Ghost give them the gift that God said that they could have and have by the Spirit of God. But we've been sending them to seminary or the cemetery to find anointing. <laughs> 
So now what's wrong with this generation? What's wrong with the church? The church is in a mess. We are damning ourselves because of the teaching and the life of knowledge. People won't read the Bible. They won't study. They won't show themselves approved. They will not reach in. But see, here it is. I'm going, I'm going to stick with this. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. But see, you know, like uh, this other guy, I call him Bishop so-and-so. He ain't preaching repentance. He said, you ain't got to repent no more. Jesus has already paid off the price. So you just live good and enjoy what God bless you with. You ain't going to heaven. You're going to line up in hell because everything that's not of God is coming down. The kingdom of God stands assured. Now you've got the seal, which is the Holy Ghost, that is to seal you until the day. You're caught up out of here. If you've been born again and sealed by the Holy Ghost, then you cannot go without repentance. You cannot go without the working of the kingdom of God in your life. You've got to repent and turn from the wicked ways. The kingdom has come. Jesus. Watch this. And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Listen here. Then Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become I'll make you fish. fishers of men. Come on. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Keep when going. he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. Come on. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue. What did he do on the Sabbath? He entered the synagogue. And, she, and that's the other thing. Now understand the seal of the Holy Ghost deal with the Sabbath. And when the Sabbath is taught right, then we can come into the knowledge of what really worked for you when you enter into the rest of his holy day. Come on, it didn't change. It's still the same. So now we got to get back to understanding the ways of God. For the kingdom has come. Understand, the kingdom is now working in the land. Everybody didn't bow down. Everybody didn't quit. Everybody ain't left the word of God. Everybody didn't turn it back on the faith. Everybody is not bothered by whatever your little stuff do at Bethel or anywhere else. You can sing what you want to sing. You can shout whatever way you want to shout. You can include whatever you want to inclusion. And the way of holiness is still holy. And it don't make no difference how you change or what you think. Say they are due. You're not going to rob the anointing of a something already dead. Amen. You probably like me trying to go ride that horse called Secretary, the fastest running horse that ever ran. Y'all heard of big, big red Secretary race horse? Well, he's dead. Now, what good is he to me now? I can outrun him. <laughs> but see, the thing is, People want to put a saddle on a dead horse and say, he used to be good, so let's get him up. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And it ain't for the glory of man. It's going to be for the glory of the kingdom of God. Come on. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And taught. And they were astonished at his teaching. Now, how did he teach? For he taught them. Come on. For he taught them. As one having authority. Having one Authority. And not as the scribes. In other words, when he went in, he went in with authority. When he went in, he knew who he was. Amen. When we going in, I don't care what city it is. I don't care what time of day or night. I don't care if it's under the tent or in a building. If it's on the street corner, the devil going to know that it is the real move of God that did hit the city. Come on. Somebody said, well, the devil got, the, the hell with the devil. He can't change what God's word is because he knows that his time is run out. He's going to hell. Amen. Oh! Hallelujah. But with authority. What, I, what I've been talking about, we're going to pray in authority. Amen. Come on. Pray in authority. 
Do you know what? When all was said and done, Job was by himself. Everybody left him. Everybody forsaken him. Even the one that's supposed to be his uh, right arm, as they said, the better half. She said, Job, why don't you, you look like a picture of death. Why don't you just curse your God and die? Job said, look here, brother, God, everything you got came from God. And look at here, everything that you breathe, and that air that you breathe came from the true and living God. Come on here. Everything that you, your emotion, your five senses was created in the image and the likeness of him. So now what you got to do is stop with the procrastinating of this lying demon sitting up in the house. Want you to think that he's God, but he ain't able to raise the dead. He ain't able to create. He's not able to do anything. Other than one of God, the Father, Lord God Jehovah, or we call him Yahweh, give him the authority to do. Y'all hear me? Amen. Because all power is given in his hand of his son. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. So Jesus said when he rose, he said, all power in heaven and in earth has been given into my hand. So now the testimony of Jesus Christ, how that the revelation has brought all things together that the world can rejoice. And the moment that we hear today and knowing that time is running out, repent. He's on his way. Let's get some more authority. Now there was a man in their synagogue with mm -hmm. clean spirit. Look at watch this authority. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Oh, oh, oh wait a minute. The devil knew who he was. He didn't go in and advertise and say, I'm, I'm the Son of God. But he knew within himself who he was. Amen. I want you to be in full assurance. Of who you are and what you're getting yourself into. We are not going to change. I'm not switching from one side to the next. I am not going to back up from this gospel. The kingdom is coming. Hallelujah. What he tells us to seek, he first the kingdom of God. Oh, I know there's a false sense, and I know there's a religion out here that wants you to think that it, it don't take all that. This is what you do. You, you come and we will include you. <laughs> But bless God, you ain't got to include me. What you got to do is get out the way and watch the work and of the salvation of the Lord. The hour is upon us now. And if we don't stand firm in the word that's already established, your name will be erased out of the Lamb Book of Life. But with the authority that he gives you, if God be forced, it more than the world is against us. Amen. Listen to what Jesus said. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. Oh, man. Look at him. This is the unclean spirit. And you got somebody coming, like, Well, we don't, we don't believe in all that casting out devils and stuff. It's scary. <laughs> What's scary is not believing God's word. What's scary is when the devil is working in your house. What's scary is when you got people knowing that it's something wrong, but you're scared to even try God or, or you go along with this religious thing. You know, a lot of people think that they're all that when they ain't about nothing. Hold your peace and come out of it. Come on. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. What, what the devil did? I mean, he thrashed around, he told man, and, but he didn't want to come out, did he? No, he didn't. But he came out. Come on. He came out. Here you got this demonic spirit in a man sitting there in the synagogue, right in the midst of church folks. None of them, brother God, recognized. But when Jesus began to teach, the kingdom has come in power and in demonstration. Today, this is fulfilled that you will know who God is. And know how he works. You know what? I'm so encouraged now by his word. Come on, baby, let's read some more. Then they were all amazed. They all were all amazed. So that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What, what, what kind of doctrine what kind, is this? What kind of church is this? What kind of gospel is this? Come on. For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. Mm. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. 
<laughs> now, as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew. Oh, look at here. James and John. But Simon's wife's mother Peter. lay sick with come a on. fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. <laughs> at evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick. They brought what? All who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Oh, my God. I'm going to close the book. Because you've got enough right there to be in, encouraged. I am seeking God that he would speak his word over me. This is my son. I'm, I'm well pleased with, with him. I, I want Roman children to know that you are highly, highly favored of God because this is my son. All authority is given because the inheritance is to the children of God. Y'all hear me? So stop sitting around here looking at what they're doing over here at Bethel and what they're doing over here. I ain't messed up about it. I'm not going to get ruckus and frustr frustrated over none of that junk. But today I'm healed. Today I'm delivered. Today I walk in the authority of the Holy Ghost and all men that's righteous and holy, that's born again, they are walk in this victory with the authority and the devil is going to know who you are. Amen. He's going to know who I am. Oh, that's Brother Ron. Oh my God, he got no rhetoric with it. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase ten thousand. What do you mean? They got the Holy Ghost in them. So I can't just buck against them and I can't tear them up because see, the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to kind of I can't touch them and grab them. You know when you're a flaming fire you know how many people in here grab a flame of fire and just hold it in your arms and just rub it all over you. You don't do it do you? I, how much y'all? How many y'all think that the devil can grab you and just wrestle you down? He gonna get burnt. You're the light of the world. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You are a living flame of fire. Come on, you have become that that the world need to keep warm and the need to be secure and the need to take care of things in this world. You are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. I said, get ready. Man, I feel this. Oh, my God, I feel this. I ain't going down. I don't, it don't make no difference. What, the, what happened, what people say, God said the door is open. Come on. Amen. And then he told me, he said, the other day, he said, I have blessed you with everything you need to get the job done. Go to work. I'm going to work. For the kingdom of God. For the kingdom is here. Ain't nobody, my, my, my God, you ain't got to sit here worried, stressed, depressed over what other folks think, say, or do. Let them do what they got to do. If you want to go to hell, go ahead. I ain't going. My name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. So therefore, you that are born again of the divine nature of God, do not back up. You know, people got stupid ideas, but you're not stupid. You got the idea and you got the vision of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That the kingdom has come. The kingdom suffered violence. You got to take it by force. Do not sit here and wait for somebody to come along. Well, it's your time now. Yea, the Lord <laughs> Lord say unto thee, thou time has cometh. The time is now. Amen. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else going to be added. That's my word. And I'm sticking to it because I got that. Keys. <laughs> 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 I got the keys. I'm sticking with the word. I'm sticking with the anointing. I'm sticking with the power of God. We are not backing up. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and we ain't going to quit. Amen. So I'm done. Thank you, Lord.
And don't forget, this is Brother Ron Childers with the True Connection Ministry. Dot com if you want to be a part and write us, write us if you're going to call us in or you're going to send in a blessing, I am ready. So we're going to get the job done. Tell the rest of them we're coming. Tell the rest of them in the club we're coming. Come on. Well, if you're coming off a hangover, you tell them, say, he's coming. Amen. And he's bringing the kingdom of God with him. He's bringing the blessings of deliverance with him. The gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. God bless you.